Jipu and Huawei just open-sourced GLM image trained entirely on Ascend Atlas 800TA2 hardware and MindSpore, a straight signal that China's AI stack is becoming independent and competitive. Google upgrades VO 3.1 with reference image video generation, native vertical output, 1080p plus 4K upscaling, and Synth ED watermarking, rolling it out across Gemini, YouTube Create, and Vertex AI. Then Google takes over healthcare workflows with MedGemma 1.5 and MedASR, built for real CT, MRI, pathology slides, lab report extraction, and clinical speech to text. And Rokid comes in with AI glasses that integrate ChatGPT, record 4K, translate in 89 languages, and add payments through Alipay plus GlassPay. All right, let's start in China with Zipu AI, since that one is the most quietly important story here. Zipu announced it partnered with Huawei to open source a model called GLM Image. It's a new generation image generation model that they describe as hitting state-of-the-art performance, SOTA, in multimodal AI. Now, what makes this special isn't only the model quality. The real headline is that Zipu says GLM Image is the country's first multimodal model that was fully trained on domestically produced chips, meaning the whole thing, end to end, wasn't dependent on NVIDIA hardware. That alone is a massive signal, because anyone following AI knows compute is the bottleneck. It isn't data anymore. It isn't even architecture, in many cases. It's supply, control, and independence. Zipu told the Global Times that GLM image was trained all the way from data processing to training using Huawei Ascend Atlas 800 TA2 hardware and that the pipeline runs on MindSpore, Huawei's AI framework. So this wasn't some workaround where you train on Western hardware and then just port things later. They're emphasizing the pipeline itself was built and optimized for this domestic stack. And they go further. They frame it as the first open source multimodal model reported to reach SOTA performance after being trained on domestically developed Chinese chips. That sentence is basically a message to the entire world. China is building an alternative AI stack and it's not just theoretical anymore. It's actually working at the level where you can compete. Technically, the architecture is interesting too. Zipu says, GLM image uses a hybrid autoregressive plus diffusion decoder architecture. That's different from the more common latent diffusion model approach, LDM, that most big image generators lean on. The way they pitch this is that this hybrid paradigm lets language and image generation integrate more tightly, and it improves results in knowledge-intensive generation scenarios. In other words, not just generating pretty pictures, but generating images that require correct knowledge, relationships, details that make sense. One of Zipu's research fellows explains they worked closely with Huawei across the entire pipeline, data preparation, large-scale training, and inference adaptation on Ascend Atlas 800 TA2 devices. After joint debugging and optimization, they say training performance got close to the practical limits of the hardware. That's a pretty revealing line, because it basically means they squeezed everything possible out of that platform. That's what a real full-stack team does. Not good enough, but pushing the chips until bottlenecks are basically at the hardware ceiling. Zeng Wendy from Zipu AI said GLM Image had full-stack innovation as the goal from the beginning. They validated the autoregressive plus diffusion decoder architecture, implemented training and inference adaptation on Ascend devices, and Huawei supported debugging and performance optimization to remove bottlenecks. So this whole thing is bigger than one model release. It's about frameworks and stacks becoming strategic again. For years, the global AI world acted like frameworks were already settled. PyTorch everywhere, TensorFlow still alive, JAX for specific teams. But now the chip side is forcing an entirely parallel stack. MindSpore is not just some side project. It's part of an ecosystem being built under pressure. Then there's the commercial side. Zipu says GLM image has a strong cost profile. Under their API pricing model, Generating a single image costs 0.1 yuan, which they translate to about $0.014 per image. That price is not research demo pricing. That's mass scale pricing. And they also mention a faster optimized version is expected soon, meaning they're already thinking in terms of deployment and market adoption, not just research. Industry commentary in the piece highlights this too. Tian Feng, president of the FastThink Institute and former dean of SenseTime's Intelligence Industry Research Institute, says the Zipu Huawei collaboration validates that domestic chips can handle complex AI tasks. 
He also frames it as further proof that China's push for independent innovation continues even with external technology blockades. He predicts that in the short term, this boosts confidence across the local AI supply chain, especially around Ascend chips, Ascend frameworks, and partners within the Zipu ecosystem. Long term, he thinks accelerated self-reliance could reshape the AI computing market, reducing dependence on foreign hardware and pushing nationwide innovation. But he also adds a reality check. Commercialization, overseas competition, and supply chain stability still require sustained effort. Then there's the market angle. The article says Zipu is publicly identified by OpenAI as a rival, and it frames Zipu as one of the first Chinese AI firms to go public, as local models move from research to large-scale commercial application. Since then, the piece claims its shares jumped more than 80%, driven by investor enthusiasm for China's AI industry. The story ends by connecting Zipu's move to Huawei's broader strategy. Huawei previously announced full open source release of its Ascend chip software ecosystem, aiming to help developers explore its potential and do customized development independently. Jinhua also reported Huawei's compute architecture for neural networks achieved breakthroughs in computing optimization, communication efficiency, and memory management, supporting training and deployment end to end. So yeah, the real message is clear, China is putting real momentum behind a domestic AI stack. Now let's jump to another power move, Google's distribution play with Veo 3.1. Google announced a major update to Veo 3.1 ingredients to video. The headline improvements are exactly what creators want, more control, better consistency, and formats that match where attention actually is today. First, reference images. VO 3.1 now generates videos based on reference images, and Google frames it as boosting expressiveness and creativity, even with minimal prompts. This is honestly one of the biggest improvements AI video can get, because prompting video still feels clunky. Reference images shortcut that whole mess. Second, vertical video support. VO 3.1 supports native vertical outputs designed for mobile. This isn't just a nice option, it's basically required if you want AI video to matter on platforms like YouTube Shorts. Third, resolution upgrades. The system supports 1080p output and 4K upscaling, aimed at users who want sharper visuals for professional workflows. And in AI video, resolution matters more than people think. A lot of tools look decent at small preview sizes, then fall apart when you try to output something clean. The other big strategic part, VO isn't a single isolated product. It's being pushed across Google's ecosystem immediately. The update is available in the Gemini app, YouTube specifically Shorts and YouTube Create Flow, Google Vids, Gemini API, and Vertex AI. That's consumer, creator, and enterprise all at once. Then they mention quality improvements like better identity consistency. That's huge because character consistency is one of the biggest weaknesses in AI video. You want the same character across scenes without the model mutating them into someone else. Google also talks about granular control over backgrounds and textures, which signals this is moving from toy generator to something closer to a controllable production tool. Now, there's one more detail that's very Google-like, Synth ID. Google is embedding Synth ID digital watermarks into AI-generated videos. That's about transparency and content verification. Basically, Google is trying to hardwire authenticity signals into the output layer, and it positions Veo as not just competitive on quality, but competitive on trust and detection too. The article frames Veo 3.1 as a direct competitor to other video generators because it offers higher resolution options, mobile-first outputs, and built-in verification tools, things that many earlier versions or competing platforms don't consistently provide. Early feedback highlights better narrative control and quality. And people are watching closely because Google is clearly building an AI content ecosystem, not just a model. Now we switch from creator tools to arguably the most impactful real-world update, Medgemma 1.5. Google Research expanded its Health AI Developer Foundations program, HAI Def, by releasing Medgemma 1.5. They frame it as open starting points for developers building medical imaging, text, and speech systems, then adapting them to local workflows and regulations. The star of the release is Medgemma 1.5 to 4B, 
a compact multimodal model. The previous Medgemma 127B stays available for more demanding text-heavy use cases. Medgemma 1.5 to 4B supports text, 2D images, high dimensional volumes, and whole slide pathology images. That's a serious range because medical workflows are far beyond normal image plus text tasks. A major upgrade is support for high dimensional CT and MRI. The model can process 3D CT and MRI volumes as sets of slices together with a natural language prompt. It can also handle large histopathology slides by operating on patches extracted from slides. Then we get the benchmark improvements. On internal benchmarks, disease-related CT findings accuracy improves from 58% to 61%. MRI disease findings accuracy improves from 51% to 65%. On histopathology, Rugel score on single slide cases increases from 0.02 to 0.49, matching the 0.498 Rugel score of the task-specific polypath model. Then Google highlights benchmarks that look more like production. On the chest image genome benchmark for anatomical localization in chest x-rays, intersection over union improves from 3% to 38%. On the MSC XRT benchmark for longitudinal chest x-ray comparison, macro accuracy increases from 61% to 66%. Across internal single image benchmark spanning chest radiography, dermatology, histopathology, and ophthalmology, Average accuracy rises from 59% to 62%. But one of the most practical upgrades is document extraction. On medical laboratory reports, the model boosts macro F1 from 60% to 78% when extracting lab type, value, and units. That is huge in real-world hospital and patient workflows because it reduces the need for brittle, rule-based parsing of semi-structured lab PDFs. They also mention something enterprise critical. Google Cloud applications can work directly with DICOM. Since DICOM is the standard radiology file format, this removes the need for custom pre-processing for many systems. Then Medgemma also improves medical reasoning. On MedQA, accuracy improves from 64% to 69%. On EHRQA, it improves from 68% to 90%. Google points out these numbers matter for workflows like chart summarization, guideline grounding, and retrieval augmented generation over clinical notes, and the 4B size keeps serving and fine-tuning costs practical. And together with Medgemma, Google also released MedASR, a conformer-based medical speech recognition model tuned for clinical audio like chest x-ray dictation, radiology reports, and medical notes. MedASR is available through the same program on Vertex AI and on Hugging Face. Then comes the benchmark comparison. Against Whisper Large V3, MedASR reduces chest x-ray dictation word error rate from 12.5% to 5.2%, meaning 58% fewer transcription errors. On a broader internal medical dictation benchmark, MedASR hits 5.2% WER, while Whisper Large V3 is at 28.2%, 82% fewer errors. That's not incremental, that's a domain-specific takeover. Now we finish with a physical product, Rokid's AI Glasses. At CES 2026, Rokid unveiled AI glasses that don't have a built-in display, focusing instead on voice assistants and a camera. The model is called Rokid Eye Glasses Style, and it directly targets Meta's Ray-Ban category. Their weight is 38.5 grams, almost 20 grams lighter than Meta's glasses. They're designed with open interfaces so they can connect to multiple AI services like ChatGPT, DeepSeek, and QN. They also mention potential integration with Google Maps and Microsoft Translation. Global sales launch is scheduled for January 19, 2026, priced at $299. Inside the glasses, Rokid uses a dual-chip architecture. NXPRT 600 handles power-efficient continuous tasks, and Qualcomm AR1 handles image processing and AI. Rokid claims up to 12 hours of use and over 24 hours in standby. Feature-wise, it's similar to Meta Ray-Bans with a 12MP camera using a Sony sensor capable of 4K video recording for first-person clips. Translation is supported in 89 languages, and voice commands work in 12 languages. Interaction includes voice, touch input, AI shortcuts, and new head gestures. Nod to answer calls, shake head to end them. They also offer a prescription lens service worldwide for strengths up to plus or minus 15 diopters, including progressive and sun protection lenses which makes the product more realistic for daily use. Then comes the most unusual part, payments. 
In collaboration with Ant International, Rokit integrated Alipay plus GlassPay. Users scan QR codes using the camera, then confirm payments via the frame using biometric authentication. In countries where the Alipay ecosystem is available, they also mention a display variant is still coming. Rokit is developing a micro LED projection model that displays text and graphics in the field of view. That version was shown at IFA 2025 in Berlin, and the Kickstarter campaign raised over half a million US dollars in 24 hours. Delivery is planned for spring 2026. So yeah, from China building full-stack AI independence, to Google embedding AI video across its ecosystem, to medical AI becoming genuinely workflow ready, to AI glasses becoming lighter, and adding payments this week was packed with real progress. Drop a comment with which one of these moves feels like the biggest long-term shift. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.